Live from New York. Better. All the way back. Ah, All the way back. Ah. Because it's April Fool's Day, I promise you a show with no jokes. Rick had a joke this morning. No joke. That's where we're at. He's like, you guys should all trade seats. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that, that would be just be interesting. ratings bonanza. <laughs> right. <It's just> nothing. <laughs> no jokes today. I'm you serious. You can't do it. Guaranteed you can't go can. without jokes. LeBron shoots 90% from three in Brooklyn. His take on father time and why one person here thinks he may want to play Denver in the first round. What? <laughs> Meanwhile, spring break is over. And Zeke might be headed back to the Cowboys. Professor Broussard gives his grade on the potential reunion. (laughs) You were calling for this all last year. A year ago. (laughs) Zeke's a year old. He was good, though. Played 17 games for the Patriots. And finally, Nick reveals the first mock draft. Oh, man. And why the Vikings are the surprise winners here. A little competition for Sam Darnold. Oh. Uh, Alongside Chris Broussard and Kevin Wilds. I need a haircut, I think. Yeah. Uh, you do. <laughs> Nick, do you have any surprises? Oh, a lot, lot of surprises. Lot. I am so deep in the mock draft streets. I'm sending Wilds and Brett Beach unprompted mock drafts. He's like, good news. <laughs> good news. <laughs> I, got, I got an idea. I, I fixed the Patriots over the weekend. <laughs> I, I, I've got I'm one sure for all seven of Brew's favorite teams coming <laughs> each of the next seven days. I, I moved around a little. Yeah. We start with LeBron in Brooklyn. Scores 40 points, gets a standing ovation. Uh, while going 9 for 10 <clears throat> from 3, the Lakeshore are 9 games about above 500. Still in the 9 spot in the West. Brew, what did LeBron prove to you this game? Still proving stuff. Well, I just think what he's proven to everyone or, or really exemplified is that in addition to being arguably the greatest athlete in American history, arguably, just pure athlete. Okay. Jim he Thorpe is, is also, fired up right now. Yeah, but yeah. there, there's a discussion, and sure. Jim Thorpe can be in it too, but yeah. LeBron James is in it. He also is one of the hardest working athletes in American history because he just did this at 39 years old, and it was 40 points on nine three-pointers. So to add something to his game, that's, what, that's where the work ethic comes in. When We know when LeBron came into the league, he wasn't much of a shooter. The strategy in the 20, 2007 finals, when his first time he got there, San Antonio, was to give him the jump shot. And it was the same thing in 2013. Give him the jump shot. All right? And now he goes out at 39 years old and hits nine threes, and it's not just what we saw yesterday. He's shooting 41.6% from three, which uh, this is a sign of how good they shoot it today. He's still only 21st in the league, Mm -hmm. but still still 41% from three is incredible. And so LeBron having accomplished all he has, for him to add the three-point shot to his game – it's just a testament to his work ethic. Even last year, I know it was an aberration, but last year only shot 32% from three. He's a 34%, almost 35% for his career. So this year, he's just showing how much work he put in in the offseason and even now. And I'll say this. I mean, if he had shot the three like this in his prime, there'd be no GOAT debate. I mean, this would be ridiculous. If he, if he shot it like this in his prime, but still to add it this late in his career – is, is impressive and shows well, how hard he works. Well, some context on that. So he is right of 21 seasons he's played. This is his fifth best field goal percentage. This is his third best effective field goal percentage, his best ever three-point percentage, and his sixth most assists per game of any season of his career. So what it appears to me <coughs> is to offset – some of the losses in athleticism, yep. he yep. has compensated by improving the three-point shot. And he said when he was asked about the difference between last year and this year was he thought last year being in and out of the lineup with injuries, and he talked right. about missing practices and shoot-arounds, that he thought that actually hampered his ability to that he could have shot like this last year mm-hmm. had he been healthy. But to me, what he's proving is – I think he's further validating something I said at the beginning of the season that I was mocked for because it sounds silly, you know, if you just read the quote, but I 
I don't, Brew and I are lucky that we have been made fun of on the internet long enough that it doesn't bother us anymore. <laughs> One of the reasons I think Wilds refuses to, as Brew puts it, let the tiger out is because he's relatively <laughs> new to people being mean to him on the internet. <laughs> so you, has, so you <laughs> shy That's away from it. The, he he, you don't, he, he don't, you don't, you don't, Br- Brew's so used to it. There's, Brew can take things people made fun of him for that he didn't actually say, like Wimby's going to be better than Akeem. And then <laughs> he's like, you know what I said? I said it. And every <laughs> I said it. I said this a few months ago, and I believe it 100% to be true. He'll never be bad. LeBron will never be bad. He said in the post-game interview, he's like, I'm not going to play another 21 years. I'm like, okay, well, then my take's safe. Like, in 20 years probably would be bad, Mm -hmm. but in five years wouldn't be. Five Five years wouldn't be. Because you say we don't know, but we didn't brew five years ago. Even his biggest supporters would have said, yeah, in true. five years, he will be a shell of himself. We can, LeBron in year 21 has now lapped the other year 21s put together. That's all of them. That's Vince, that's Dirk, that's Parrish, that's KG, that's Willis, that's Moses Malone. LeBron, like, when we look, Kareem, whose longevity was the best we had seen before LeBron, his last excellent year was year 17 at mm-hmm. age 38. LeBron is age 39, year 21. Carl Malone, his last great year was year 16, age 37. Kobe's was year 17, age 34. MJ's last game with the Bulls was year 13, age 35. So doing this at age 39, year, year 21, seemed impossible. So the idea that he wouldn't still be a really good player at 42 in year 24... Like, I, I just don't think he'll ever be bad. Here's the, here's the challenge for that. And it's why there have been a couple guys that, you, that weren't, but obviously in football, Tom Brady, yep. Jim Brown retired early. But the challenge for that is if you're not bad, like a lot of guys will keep playing until they're bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't know that LeBron would do that. But that is the th- that is why you see so few guys retire. I mean, Jordan, to be honest, wasn't bad. He never was bad. No. But he kept he obviously retired multiple times. But yeah, I, I just think it's inter- it's an interesting point. Look, I think five years is probably that's too. I, I think that's too much. He'd be what forty four. Uh, but I I don't see, I don't know what, if he'll if, if he's still playing well like. Averaging 23? That's what I'm saying. Is he so, going to retire? So that's what I wanted to – so why? Unless like, he's on a bad team. Like in right, five years he's going to average? No, I'm just saying – Five years I, I, I don't, I'm not thinking so. the, well, that's, that, That's kind of my point. Like, Because I would argue this. Obviously, he is not – not only is he not peak LeBron, no matter what the numbers show you, he's not close to peak right. LeBron for a lot of reasons. Most notably, peak LeBron, I believe, was the best defensive player in the league. And now and he's you know, telling J.J., like, I got to pick my spots now on that side yeah. of the ball. It's things. But I don't think he, he is deteriorating year by year. I think he is better this year than last year. Yeah, I think that LeBron, because he's healthy this yeah. year, and is bet, and better, and he's shooting better, is better this year than last year. By the the advanced stats, and I understand like the raw counting stats, everything's inflated and all of this stuff. I get that part of it, but amongst his peers this season of, that are playing right now, he's sixth in the league in per. He's seventh in box plus minus. He's sixth in value over replacement player, like those catch-all stats. So Mm -hmm. his deterioration has been so slow that he's gone from clearly the best in the league to clearly in the discussion to, okay, not the best or second best or third best, but in the discussion for somewhere from four to ten. So how much further, you know what I mean? Like how much worse does he have to get each year to where you get to the point of like, ah, he's – he, you know what I mean? It's Willie Mays in the outfield. It'll never happen for this guy. It'll never happen. I mean, we'll see. it depends on when he retires. You know, but I think with LeBron, we just look at his winning. You know, like the numbers are nice. The numbers, like you said, people are putting up more inflated numbers in this year's NBA. But for him, it's about winning. If he's putting up these numbers – and not winning, that's the thing with him. He probably wouldn't want to play in that situation. And that's why he might retire. But now, usually with guys, you can still put up numbers, but you get injured. He even said that in the podcast with JJ is that I have to pick my spots, you Mm -hmm. know. And so that's the thing. Like, he can do it, but can he stay healthy, like, for 60 games in a year to do it? So 
Uh, another day, another record for LeBron. Uh, he now holds the record for most 30-point games in NBA history. After the game, LeBron talked about longevity and father time. Take a listen. Not very long. Not very long. Um, I'm on the other side, obviously, at a hill, so uh, I'm not going to play another 21 years. That's for damn sure, but uh, not very long. Um, I don't know what uh, when that door will close as far as my when I'll retire, but I don't have much time left. Chances LeBron wins another title. Ooh. I mean, if he stays with the Lakers for the rest of his career, I'd say quite slim. Because mm -hmm. I don't trust the front office. I don't trust the coaching. I don't trust the drafting. Like, I just don't. I mean, even up to this year, you can be like, ah, they don't have a lot of draft picks because it's the Anthony Davis trade. This year, at pick 17, they took Jalen hood Shafino. The three picks after him are all, all helping teams in the playoff mix right now. Mm. Cam Whitmore, Pods for the Warriors, right, and right, right. the best player, Hawkes for the Heat. All guys that are, you know what I mean? As, as, and so, right after it. The, pr prior to that, the biggest pick that they had you, before they traded all those guys away, it was uh, they took Lonzo over Tatum and Fox, which, by the way, I supported at the time, Lonzo, to be fair. Yeah, but it's not – but, okay. I mean, it was uh, – I don't think the Celtics would have done it. I think that the yeah. Celtics would have taken Tatum at one. So there's that piece of it. But I don't – I mean, he just had the first ever 40-point game on that few shots and free throw attempts in NBA history. He right now this season, Brew, is in the fourth quarter – you could argue, we can show it to you, the best player in the league in the fourth quarter. So, can is he is he good enough to still be a top two guy on a champion? Unequivocally, yes. Are the Lakers, because I think the Lakers brew are going to go after that third star approach, which I don't think is the right approach in today's NBA. I think that the talent pool's too deep. I think the approach they had when they won a title in L.A. is the right approach. LeBron, A.D., and a good supporting cast. And so I think, he's, I think he can. I think with the Lakers it would be very, very difficult. Yeah, I don't think he will. Now, the third, I agree with you on the third star approach. Unless, and this is the one way I think that he could win another championship. And this won't happen because this team is really playing well. If they somehow were able to get Kyrie Irving, and you're talking about AD, LeBron, and Kyrie. Kyrie knows how to play with LeBron. He'll defer to LeBron, respects LeBron. Like, that would be, I think they'd be able to win a championship. But that's not going to happen. Obviously, Dallas is happy with Kyrie. Otherwise, I don't, I don't see them winning it. And this is where it's a bit baffling to me. And maybe it's because we've been spoiled by LeBron's career. As you see, the numbers are very good. We know he's not quite what he used to be, because particularly defensively. And when he was in his prime, he would control the tempo of games. And that's what he can't do now because he doesn't have the ball all the time. And he doesn't want it all the time because of the stamina. But I, I got to be honest, I, I think their team is good, like the roster. I mean, you got two legitimate stars mm -hmm. that, whose games complement each other. Austin Reeves, uh, D'Angelo Russell, Rui, I mean, we, Tori and Prince, we could go down the line. I think they've got depth. They shoot the three well. They don't shoot it a lot, mm -hmm. but they're in the top ten. They're, I think, seventh in three-point field goal percentage. So it's a bit baffling that with LeBron putting up these numbers, AD putting up these numbers and playing great defense, and the players that they have, the so, role players, that they're not – Better is it so? I don't. Is it that baffling? It's not that baffling to me because I think it just speaks to the depth of talent in the league right now. You're right that on paper the roster doesn't look terrible, but when I you mean stack when I it, watch the games though, the, I think these guys can play. Yeah, but when you stack it up against the teams they're competing Denver? with in the West, I mean yes. Denver's roster is the, that much better. Uh, yeah. Yes. After Yo, really? I, I mean, KCP's the, playing a huge role. The, I mean, Aaron Gordon, who is good. But nobody thought he was all that spectacular before. He's but, the third so, guy. So I think, De but, but Denver also has the benefit of having the best player in the league, or certainly a, a, one they of the few teams. They found a way to really play with, great team right, basketball. Right, but so take Denver out of it because Jokic, in, for a lot of people, is kind of a cheat code right now, like LeBron maybe a decade ago. You look, look at the Thunder's overall roster. Far better. Really? Minnesota's oh, really? overall roster. Far better. Yeah. I mean, we're, seriously. We're I, talking, I don't. Hold on, we're talking How? about after their top two guys, right? Because that's everybody agrees LeBron and they. But are I mean, excellent. the top two guys are a part of it. The, no, of of course. I mean, you but, can't just say after the top two because and, and even yeah. after the top two. Yes, Jaden Williams and 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 Chet, who's young in mean, his first year. That I mean, Chet is I guess number two. Josh Giddy, Josh Giddy, uh, Austin Reeves. 
Yeah, I think Giddy's better. And I think. And but I it's think close. J- the, you and said I don't know that he's better. I don't know that he's And Chet is definitely better as an all around player than D'Lo. Like, and then well, go, Chet it would be the second best, right? Chet, Chet Jalen. So you had Jalen. Second I best you player on OKC yeah, okay. versus AD so, yeah. or versus the, LeBron. So get, right. So, and then Giddy and then Dort, you'd go down. I just look at, the, re- I look at the rest of the West. I don't West. see how you can the, say OKC's roster is better overall. Now, they might have better coaching. This is what if people want to start looking at the coaching, and they do with Darvin. I think Darvin's a co- good coach. But I, and look, let's face, let's be honest. The Lakers have played good basketball for now for a few months. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we'll see what they do in the playoffs. So this may all, you know, show out. But I think the roster is good. I really do. Okay. Do you have him winning a title? No. No. You're no. So, and you think he needs to leave? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's what you Do agree, you, right? You think he should leave this I mean, offseason? I don't think he will leave. I think that, and I'm not saying he should. I'm saying if if the question were, the if the only thing that mattered was best chance to win a title as a major contributor, you know what I mean? So remove, I'll go sign with the Nuggets for the minimum. You know, mm-hmm. that doesn't exist. Right. Uh, then I would say yes, leave. I, uh, and, you know, in my perfect world, I mean, like, Philly would be. The, Philly would work. I also told you I thought, you know, the fantasy camp of, he and Steph teaming up in Charlotte is pretty neutral territory. Steph gets to go to his hometown. LeBron I mean, gets be, to, LeBron gets to, to get a Trump Jordan, be like he owned the team for 20 years. They oh, won yeah. one playoff game. Good take. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go bring you to the finals. That'd be fun, too. Guess who's back or almost back? It's Joel Embiid. Reports are that the reigning MVP could be back for tomorrow's game against the Thunder in Philly. He's been out since late January with a knee injury. Drew, how dangerous is Philly if Joel returns? Dangerous? Uh, look, there'll be three questions. And maybe they work through these in the seven games he may play at the end of the regular season. What is there a minutes restriction? How's his stamina? And then thirdly, what is Joel going to be as great in the playoffs as he's been in the regular season? He was playing better than Jokic even in the, when he yes. got hurt. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were twenty six and eight with him. That's like a sixty two win pace, I believe. And so they were playing great basketball. But we look at his numbers regular season versus playoffs. Rebounds is fine, but scoring, field goal percentage, three point go way down. And I would, I, I tend to think it may be because he's always banged up in the playoffs. Yeah. Even if he plays, there'll be a game or two here or there that yeah. he has to sit out, or he plays, but he's only eighty percent. And that's where this year could really help. Now, if he comes out this year and looks good in these last few get regular season games, and then in the playoffs his numbers drop off like that, then you know, okay, there's it, maybe it's not quite James Harden, but there's something like that going on. Mm-hmm. But I think, look, outside of Boston, now they, if they're the eighth seed, then they probably face Boston. I don't see them beating Boston. But outside of Boston and this team because they play so hard, Miami, oh, you're believing- I think they have a shot. You don't think City. they'd have a shot against Miami? No, I think no, I think they'd have a shot against Miami, but oh. I'm saying that'd be a tough one for gotcha. them to win okay. because of the way Miami's played, just the grit. Boston, I think, would beat them. After that, I'm not saying I'd pick them over my, Milwaukee, but I'd give them a good shot against yeah. Milwaukee and I anybody else, obviously. Last three series for Embiid, he's played uh, 13 games, but he's missed four games. He missed the first two in Miami, then he rested that closeout against yeah. the Nets. Remember, we were like, that was smart, which you know is a problem. We're like, hey, it's good to rest when you're resting within the playoffs. And then he missed game one and the Celtics end up losing. Right. LeBron, of course, has never missed a playoff game. Yeah. So you see sort of like the dichotomy in the A block of like, all right, LeBron's never missed, still going strong at 39. Oh. Embiid kind of needs – legitimate load management, and we think this is going mean, mean, to be good for th- right, him? Right. The glass half full idea is that he got the injury. I don't want to say got the injury out of the way, but is going to be fresher for right. this postseason mm-hmm. than before. The glass half empty is this is two drastically different teams. We can sh- like The fact that the Sixers have fallen as far and as fast as they've fallen, if we can show you them with and without Embiid, I mean, it's that incredible. win percentage, like Bruce said, w- w- was right on Boston's heels. And without them, they're the Raptors, which I know I pitched this in the meeting and you guys said you didn't want to do it. I'm doing it anyway. Oh. This is why if they are the eight seed, the Celtics shouldn't have to play them. That's right. <laughs> this is why that the number one seed, it, can you imagine if you get the one seed, you're Boston, you get Philly, and you're Denver and you're the one seed, and you have sitting there at the six line or the Sacramento Kings with no Malik Monk. Or it's like, hey, by the way, congrats, guys. Here's the Suns. They've beaten you twice in a row. They've got Durant and Booker. That's your per- that's your 
uh, prize for being the one seed. It, it, of course, the top seed should be able to pick their playoff opponent. <laughs> if you're Philly, though, you don't want to play Boston round one, obviously. I agree with you guys that they are super dangerous. Mm -hmm. They would be, to me, similar to the Lakers last year where they're a seven seed in name only. And for the Lakers, it was because they remade the team on the fly at the deadline. For the Sixers, it would be we were going to be have one of the two or three best records in the sport. Our guy went down, but now he's back. And so, yeah, I mean, they would be, to me, the third most dangerous team in the East. But if they stay in the play-in, one of those two teams ahead of them is going to have to play them in round one. And so that would be a huge bummer for either the like Celtics it. I mean, or Boston. it's Boston. a good idea. It will never happen, but it's a good really? idea. Really? I don't I – don't. Do, you don't think – like can, can I just pitch this is real the, quick? I mean, you, like, you, you would say last year it could come into play, but yeah. maybe that's what – I don't know. I, I just think you play who you play. Right. But I'm the, old school. I understand, school. but in the I'm old school – Can I just tell you something yeah, real quick, yeah, Rube? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. In the yeah. old school – Guys, everybody played almost 80 or 80, 82 yeah, games. Good point. There was no ducking opponents. There was no – right. right. But now that that does exist, you have to do things to mitigate it. What we don't want is teams being like, we could be the one seed, but it's better for us – as you know, a, a top seed to lose games at the end of the year, so we then drop in the seed. You know what Joe Mazzulla would do? I don't know. Try to block an Embiid shot? <laughs> I don't know what he would do. He would just, we want Philly. No, I mean, Missoula would probably be like, give us the Bucks round one. We'll take it. Give us Denver. <laughs> uh, yeah, Missoula's out of his mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the unbeatable Huskies next on First Things First and Fox Sports Radio on Sirius XM. UConn is just going to roll. I told you guys this. I mean, you I didn't tell all. I picked you pick it. Then I, I picked them in the fall during weird. Okay, quick math. The less your business spends on operations, on multiple systems, on delivering your product or service, the more margin you have and the more money you keep. Obvious. But with higher expenses on materials, employees, distribution, and borrowing, everything costs more. So, to reduce costs and headaches, smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system bringing accounting, financial management, inventory, HR into one platform and one source of truth. With NetSuite, you reduce IT costs because NetSuite lives in the cloud with no hardware required accessed from anywhere. You cut the cost of maintaining multiple systems because you've got one unified business management suite. And you're improving efficiency by bringing all your major business processes into one platform, slashing manual tasks and errors. Over 37,000 companies have already made the move. So do the math. See how you'll profit with NetSuite. Now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to NetSuite.com slash FTF. NetSuite.com slash FTF. NetSuite.com slash FTF. Time now for the gloating portion of the show. <laughs> the best team in the country and eventual back-to-back champions, the Yukon Huskies, rattled off a 30 to nothing run to start the second half and sent the Illini home. UConn back to the Final Four. In this tournament brew, UConn has trailed for less than 30 seconds. Also, now have the longest tournament streak of 10-point wins in tournament history. Brew, can anyone beat the mighty UConn Huskies? Yes. Yes. Themselves? No, no. I mean, look, they're the best team in the nation. If these were seven-game series, they would clearly win. But in a one and done, and I look, and, and fortunately they have a coach who will not let them relax. And I that's know. good. That's why they're so great. Danny mm-hmm. Hurley, he won't let them relax. So that's a positive. But guys, I'm older than you. If you didn't know, I'm older than you guys. Well, we, everyone knows. <laughs> I have seen teams look this dominant and not win. Who? Five Slamma Jamma with Akeem they, Olajuwon that lost they, to NC State. The, the, right, uh, Patrick they, Ewing's Georgetown team that lost yeah, to Villanova. Yeah, so, oh, I mean, we th- this is like a scary position to be in because a lot of, UNLV when they lost to Duke, a lot of times when teams just roll through, so they lose. A, they can lose the, one game. So, all right. So, a couple points. And I don't think I'm not saying they will, but yes, they the, could. The reason I said who was because to Wilds's point, we've never seen this. We've never seen a team win this many tournament Double games in a row, all in blowout fashion. Right. 
NC State, in which I know we'll get to, is obviously a unique one because they were a huge underdog and because the NC State underdog now exists 41 years later in this tournament. But the UNLV team that lost to Duke, that Duke team was a fellow juggernaut. You know what I mean? The, with the but it wasn't five. close to – I mean, it, it looked like that, that the UNLV had dusted them the year no, before. I, mm-hmm. I understand. At Larry the, Johnson. The, I, I get – my point is, with respect to Purdue, I don't look at this Purdue team as a juggernaut. I think they're a really good team. And so, Fab Five team lost to a great team. And so – and it lost right. in heartbreaking fashion, obviously. I just – Brew, you know this pains me. Here we go. Wilds well, just <laughs> happens. Every, happens about once a month, everybody. It's like the eclipse. No, Get the, ready for this. Put your sunglasses on if you got them at home. Get ready. Wilds was right there all we along. Go. Thank you. He was, Wilds Woo. was right all. <laughs> you know, <you're> right. <laughs> Wild, I mean, Wilds. Since we were doing like the preseason tournament promos on this show, not preseason, but before conference tournament season yeah. games, he was calling the Huskies the future back to two back. back-to-back yeah. champs. And they did just have, Brew, a 30 to nothing run nothing. against a team that entered the tournament mm-hmm. ranked 10th in the country. Can I make you feel... I, if no, you I, want to change. I, I picked the, UConn. I'm not I saying know. they're going I to get beat. I'm so just saying I understand it's not an impossibility. Teams can get hot. You can ebb and flow. They just had their bad game. I think the first half, I think the starters outside of Klingon was were like one for 17. But the defense never goes away. Last year's defense won the national championship. This year's defense has gotten even better. So 53 uh, points per, per game. Field goal percentage is down. Opponents threes way down. So the idea that you're going to get an open look and maybe get hot, that's not happening. I mean, four and a half threes a game. I mean, it, they do have it all. They've yeah. got experience. They've got size with Klingon. They, they're, and, and you guys know, you always hear me talk about five-man basketball. That's what they play. Everybody's cool. moving. The ball is moving. I like it. They were like my pick. They- I'm just saying – if Bruce it, it big could on any happen. given Sunday, any it, given Sunday, yeah, yeah, Saturday, yeah. Tuesday, yeah. whatever it is, nope. Monday yeah. night. Nope. Number eleven, North Carolina <laughs> State takes down Duke to get to the Final Four. DJ Burns goes for twenty nine points in the win. Nick, how impressive has their run been? All right, I don't want to be hyperbolic, but this is one of the wildest runs in college basketball history. This team lost twice to Syracuse. I watched one of those games in full. Syracuse, not very good. Syracuse beat them twice before the ACC tournament. This team, it's not just that they had to win all five ACC tournament games Mm -hmm. to get here, and now obviously this. So nine straight games that they had to win or they would be out. Seven of those nine, they were underdogs. They were they, So they have been underdogs in seven of their last nine, including one, two, three, four, four times by at least eight points, twice by double digits. And, I mean, they just rolled Duke. This, six must-win games ago, they're in this circumstance. Down, We can show it to you. Down three, two seconds left, or five seconds left, with Virginia at the line. They miss a free throw. This terrible shot clangs in <laughs> accidentally. And now all of a sudden, they're in the final four. It's pretty good. And so I just I it is similar. Listen, Jimmy V's team they, they won the ACC tournament and they went on their crazy run for NC State 41 years ago. But this is more improbable. This is cra- really you think? Well, they finished it, but that became so improbable. They only had of, three at that time. It took three games to win the ACC. Right, it, and that and that team was better in the regular season. This team finished ninth in the ACC. Well, here's what's interesting, and and obviously the the comparison to Valvano, everybody's making, and it's appropriate. Yeah. All right. Neither team, Valvano's in '83 that went on to win the championship over Elijah and Drexler, and this team, neither one of them was going to make the tournament if they didn't win the ACC tournament. Yep. Both of them had 17 wins when they went into the ACC tournament. Yep. So they played more. They were 17 and 10 in 83, 17 and 14 this year. They've beaten the second seed Marquette, fourth seed Duke twice in this nine game stretch, and number one seed North Carolina, obviously, twice. All right. Or, or beat, not twice, but beat them. Mm-hmm. And so 
It's incredibly impressive. And this is what I'm talking about. Strange things happen in March, Wilds. Okay. Strange things. All right, I have two, two notes. One, the last five 11 seeds to make the Final Four lose this game. They, no one's made it to the Final Two. So yeah. I know strange things happen, but eventually 11 seeds <laughs> turn into a pumpkin. Typically okay. those are okay. major teams, though, okay. to be fair. The, right, that's no, a good UCLA move. was 11, oh, LSU. Was Syracuse an 11 when, when we made it? No, I think oh, you okay. were uh, 10. Eight. And the, the, we they were an eight, eight when we made it in 2010, okay. but in 2016, I think we were. No eight. team with 14 okay. losses that ever made the Final Four. Yeah, because because you have to win your conference tournament if you. I'm have just, I'm just I'm trying to be nice, yeah. but they're probably going to lose. I, I hope they were a 10. What a pull by Wilds. Uh, Peter Schroeger, I think I said eight though. You said yeah, that's terrible. Know, a terrible lot of times, pull if by you just <laughs> are confident. Spoke to and texted multiple scouts, GMs about NC State big man DJ Burns as an NFL. Offensive tackle prospect or last 24 hours? He's listed at 6'9", probably 6'7". Uh, Brudy, you like this? I do. I, and I actually think watching him, he's, his footwork is tremendous. He's obviously athletic. He's agile. He's strong. Now, the only question, I don't know if he played in high school. My guess would be that he did, as big as he is. But my only question is his toughness. I'm not saying he looks like he's not tough. I can't tell. I'm just saying, does he have the toughness to play football? If he does, I actually do think he could make the transition. I think. Mean, listen, I, I think he has a better chance at the NFL than the NBA. And so, yeah. uh, if you you know what I mean, you, yep. the, his he has great size for an NFL tackle if he puts on the weight. His size makes him a non-starter for the NBA at his position. Yep. And so, if he wants to play pro sports in America, I think that's awesome. And I buy that. I think that's smart. I think that looking for guys like, hey, they check these boxes from a trait standpoint right. as far as athleticism or just size, yep. strength, yep. and then see if we can teach them some of the other stuff. I think that's smart. Right, so We've save- seen it, obviously, with tight end. More, more yeah. so with tight end. Save, save that thought because uh, this other. drives me crazy here. What? Finally, Purdue. Over the volunteers, Zach Eady dominant, 40 points, 16 rebounds. Brew, do you like him in the NBA? I don't like him in the NBA, but let me give him some love. Wink, I'm winking at Dusty right now. Okay. Again, Dusty forced me to put up this graphic. It's impressive. Brew, I, I will give in, you that. Brew. Look at this. In the last 60 years, it, nobody has done what he's done in this tournament since Elvin Hayes in 1968. Yeah. And by the way, that Bill Bradley game, I think, was the third place game, which I don't think should count. I looked this up. <laughs> wow. Bradley scored 58. I'm like, he scored 58 in the, the championship that they won? I was like, no, it was third place game. The other team probably didn't care. Uh, yeah. But go ahead. But third look, place game. Get when, out when you're talking about bigs in the NBA, scouts, they look for three things. Can he defend block to block? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can he defensive rebound? Yes. Yeah. All right. Can he guard the screen and roll? And that's obviously no. Now, there's others that can't. You know, Gobert's not awesome at it. He drops. But Gobert's more athletic than this guy, moves better. I, I, look, I think he'll get dry. If I were a team, I'd look at him as a second rounder. I'd, uh, he'd be on a roster. And he'll be a guy that sees a few minutes, but he's not going to be a regular player in the NBA, well, uh, in my view. Before I give my answer, what are you driven crazy by here, Wilds? Nerds. What, what, do, you, what do you mean? <laughs> Just the nerds are ruining everything. Why? It drives me crazy that I'm reading his draft profile, and it's like, well, can he defend the three? It's like... Man, but I'm seven th- foot four. I got to defend threes. Hey, he's only taken two threes all year. He's playing winning basketball. They're, what, 35-4? and four? He scored 40 points. He's the reigning national player of the year. He can't get to the next level and play NBA basketball. But, Meanwhile, the Chiefs are drafting rugby guys. I'm like, yeah, that'll work. We, we just talked about him. It just drives me nuts the that but here's the thing, a great like, college basketball player can't play. I'm going to give you a name. Luke Garza. Just a few years ago at Iowa, Luke Garza, who's 6'11", Naismith player of the year, Wooden player of the year, He's on a team. He got drafted in the second round by Detroit. He's sitting on the bench in Minnesota. That's what Zach Eady will fl- do. Oh, okay. The best players his age are in the NBA. Hey, you don't e- right. You don't even have to give Luke Garza. We, uh, the Kevin Pitsnoggle. You cry tears for that guy. What about Jimmer? He was not as good that, as Zach Eady. What, what, J- Jimmer wasn't? No, Jimmer. Jim, no, oh, no. And Pit Snoggle. No, no, but Pit Snoggle was not quite as good. Jimmer saying, can't play defense. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, exactly. That, listen. There, you said it. You said it exactly Put him on the Warriors. Hold on. Wait a second. First of all, just so you know, know. Kevin O'Connor, 
said that he thought his fit on the Thunder could be interesting because Chet how could take care of, make the no, because Chet could take care of this a lot and of the defensive stuff. Oh, like uh, Gavoni now just recently said he could be a late lottery pick, this, yeah. which seems high for me. Mm-hmm. I the now with all that said, there is such a thing as being a great college player that does not guarantee you are a great pro player. Here's what he does deserve Tyler massive Hale, credit bro. for. There's a record that has stood for basically my entire life, and that is most points in the NCAA tournament. Do you guys know who holds it? One of the greatest video game players ever, Glenn Rice from the Oh, NBA yeah. Uh, 182. Edie's at 120. Or 184, pardon me. So he's averaging 30 a game. If he, you know, 180 times 6, or six, 30 times 6 would be 180. So if he has 65 points, 32 and a half, in the next two games, he breaks Glenn Rice's record. Cool. Maybe nice. you can win the title. Like you said, he can be a legendary all time college basketball yeah. player. And still be a guy that's going to have a hard time finding a spot in the NFL. Like or that, NBA, or in yeah. the NBA, pardon me. Yeah, actually easier in the NFL. He'll be on a roster. <laughs> he'll be on a roster. And it sounds like he'll be a first-round pick. Okay. Should be late. Just, that's not, that's not the thing to blame nerds for. Here we go. Wild oh. got so gun shy. I told you guys the you internet can't do it. No it. left. There you go. No, you got no, no left. left. No <laughs> left. I'm out here like Jalen Brown. Uh, Wemby's <laughs> dominant. Two games since our last show. Totals for Wemby, 72 points, 29 rebounds. His defense has been stellar. Here's uh, uh, Josh's full screen. More blocks than AD or Gobert. Opponent's field goal percentage way down. And defensive rebounds, 8 AD has almost 10. Gobert has 9. So, Brew, the team has only won five more games than the laughing stock <laughs> Detroit Pistons. Yeah. But does Wemby deserve a look at Defensive Player of the Year? Well, he also leads the league in stocks. You yeah. know, that's the new steals and blocks. Yeah. You didn't know that. Well, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that new. Um, you know look, it. <laughs> I'm not going to hold their record against them. He's going to be my vote for player, Rookie of the Year, yep. and he's going to win that, obviously. And I'm considering him. I said, really? what, two weeks ago, I think it was, I said I'm going with Gobert. I still have Gobert. Minnesota has the best defense in the league, all cool. right, and he is the anchor. He discourages everything at the rim. Yep. He, you know, he re- rebounds defensively. He can guard the, the post. Uh, and AD is in consideration, but neither – AD doesn't really guard the screen and roll either like Gobert doesn't guard that well. The difference is Gobert doesn't mind the physicality of guarding big centers, and AD doesn't really like that. So that's why I kind of like Gobert over AD. And I got – also the Lakers are like middle of the road well, defensively, yes. and then San Antonio is bottom ten. Yep. And I, I just – for a rookie, he's playing spectacular basketball, obviously. But I think I'm leaning, I'm leaning Gobert right okay. now. But I, I've got an open mind. All right. Prediction. Brew ends up voting for Wimby. Wow. Really? I think he'll overtake by the end of it. I think he will. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't think their record should be disqualified. I think their team defensive rank could be. See, that's you know what I mean. Like if they if they had this record, but it was because their offense was just god awful and they had a top ten defense, then I'd listen. You know what I mean? Then I'd listen to it. It's hard to, but it it it, it's hard in that regard. Can I give you a counterpoint from the Athletic? Sure. The defensive rating just last fifteen games with Wemby on the court is at one hundred six, which is best. Yeah. The problem is he's not maybe not on the court. No, no, no. But it's the other problem with that is last fifteen games. Yeah. Like and so the. And the defensive rating isn't all of it because I think Anthony Davis has a case for defensive player of the year, and it's because what the Lakers' defense is when he's off the court. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know they're middle of the pack overall, but it's Wimby's because I think that they are the one of the worst defenses in the league when he's not out there. But whether he wins this or not, I don't think he's going to win it. I think Gobert's going to win it. This is really hard. This is a tough Monday for me, guys. I had to say this thing to Wilds before. I mean, this now I have to close. say this to Brew. I mean, I think Brew was right about this guy. I, I don't think it about was, the most heralded prospect I, no, Brew is getting <laughs> in American sports history. Here's the thing: he said it like I was in I, France scouting. No, know. that's not, I mean, that's not what I mean. European but I thought, I thought, I thought <laughs> Brew was over the top. Oh, okay. I thought Brew was over the top with what his expectations were. But if we go back to what we were saying, he would be what fair expectations his rookie season were from a stats perspective, Mm -hmm. 
I think we all might have undershot it a bit, but Brew was closest. And while I expected instant defense of this level, and I know we're having a defensive conversation, what he's doing offensively the last couple months is shocking to me. And I don't think it's shocking to Brew. And so that's one where Brew maybe is amongst others. But as far as, like, where he – how quickly he can be one of the five best players in the league, I think – you know, year three is on the board now. Definitely. And if he I did has not. a great off season, it's it's possible oh, yeah. it could be next year. Like if he really works and, and gets stronger, I think he's going to be emboldened. He's going to be more confident. You agree with me? That I just, this, I mean, the ceiling is go. And you agree with that? That's a little ceiling. That's a little really. Little it's on the board. It's, it, it's, it's, it's on the board. board. I guess, okay, sure. Is it on, on the board? board? Yeah, it's going to be board. how much can he win? Yeah. On the board. How much board. does he want? That's what it all is going to come down to. Were there any interesting stats about your pick? Ooh, coming up in 24 hours and 10 minutes, a special edition of King of the Hill. You know who's flying up the charts? Who? This guy right here. Luka okay. Doncic. Oh, yeah. It's a battle of two red-hot Texas teams. Goes to Luka, 47-12-7, and, and all of a sudden... MVP chatter is picking up again. Luca saying, I can't answer that, the MVP question. That's for the media. I'm happy we're winning, man. That's it. You know I'm not going to answer that question. Mavs have lost once, Nick, in their last 12 games. Yeah. Could your guy Luca win the MVP? Absolutely could. Uh, I think right now he's got a really, really strong case. The only argument against him every time we talked MVP at any point of the season was the Mavs record. Yeah. Right. The, the, the numbers were jaw-dropping, and I want to put the numbers in context. He's averaging 34 points per game, and I know the gut reaction is, ah, oh, scoring's way up. Not so much anymore the last half of the season. Only three players are averaging 28. You know, and over There's the last some guys have been played uh, right, over years. the last thirty years, the average guys per season to average twenty eight plus is two and a half, and right now this year it's three, four if you include Embiid, mm-hmm. but Embiid's only played like thirty games, so the scoring's up, but not for everybody yeah. across the board. He is averaging thirty four nine and nine. The only people to average thirty nine and nine are Oscar and Russ. Neither of them averaged thirty two those seasons, and that both of them had way lower field goal percentage and right. effective field goal percentage than Luka's doing right now. So it's him and Jokic, and Brew, we can show you their numbers. Obviously, Luka's way ahead in scoring. Jokic is considerably ahead in rebounding. The assists, call it even. second and third. The, right, second. The field goal percentage, it tilts heavily to Joke, Joker, but then effective field goal percentage, which includes the fact that Luca's field goal percentage is pulled down by the fact that he shoots so many more threes. It's a lot closer. Mm-hmm. So here's what I'd say, Brew. Right now they're two and five in the Western Conference, if, as far as this team standings. If they finish third and fourth, how be, you know what I mean? If Denver finishes third, which right now it's a half game out of it, and the Mavs get up to the four line, is there enough of a difference in team success to disqualify Luca? I say there is not. Well, look, Dallas, and, and, and I think a lot of the voters are smart enough to recognize this as well. One of the reasons their record was so poor early was that a lot of guys were injured. Not Luka so much, but a lot of their teammates were, you know, out here and yep. there. And, and so they really were – they didn't have any continuity. Mm-hmm. All right, and now they're playing so well. If they get up to the fourth seed, then I, I'm, I'm seriously considering him already. And then as the fifth seed in the West, they're two games behind Milwaukee, yep, which is second in the East. Mm. And nobody, not that Giannis is going to win it, but nobody's holding their record against them as a reason. I mean, early on it was disappointing and stuff, but nobody's saying, oh, they've only won 47 games. They're probably going to win 50. A lot of years, 50 has kind of been that Threshold. benchmark. And now if they get 50, and you, sh- you showed the numbers. And the interesting thing is how much, like, I hate to say this, but I think it's true because you should go year to year. But there's a lot of history. And I even as one of my criteria, I do put history in there. Mm -hmm. All right. And a lot of people I think Jokic started this season with a head start. Right. Because a lot of people felt like he should have won it last year. Yeah. All right, and so he started with a head start, and that's fine because he, he's been fantastic, and if he wins it this year, it's, it can be justified for sure. 
But oh, throughout history, we've kind of divvied if because every year there's several guys that play well for the most part. It, it might be a year here and there where there's one guy, right? Where there's new or. Jordan won five. You're going to tell me he's only the best player in the league five or, you know, the MVP five times. LeBron's only got four. But Durant got one in there. Was he really better than LeBron that year? I mean, we've seen Barkley Barkley. and all these guys, Carl Malone, get them because it's like this is an all-time great player. He hadn't gotten one yet. Luka obviously is in that class. And when it's this close, and you're right, I mean, if the records are – Right like that, then I think Luca would get it. Um, and Shea, Shea is great. They could be the number one seed, but he doesn't have the all-around numbers. He's got the scoring, but not the assist I, or the rebounds that Luca or Jokic has. I, I mean, since the merger, thirty-four a night. Harden wants, Kobe wants, Jordan. That's it. Like that's the, the and he's and, winning doing. And, and so right, and, and the and so it is. It's a tough w- – what, Wilds? Nothing. You think what? it's clearly Jokic? I've been saying that he needs to win. And you guys are like, no, no, no. no. And yeah. now he wins. Luka? Like, you know what? Yes. We, no, we all have been saying that. We bought I mean, this guy. What, not the I, other when, guy. Well, I don't really think he had it. Live from New York, it's the show that has a mock draft, power-packed half hour coming at you. It's the second hour of First Things First. Today is tonight's LSU-Iowa <laughs> rematch. A must-win for Caitlin Clark, meanwhile is a Zeke Cowboys reunion in the cards. Bruce report cards, that is. But right now, it's April 1st, which means we're eyeing the NFL draft. Our own Nick Wright has launched his own mock draft, available on FoxSports.com. Cha-ching! Spoiler, it has the Patriots getting T. Higgins. So I am thrilled, Nick. What other surprises do you have baked into he this He does not have draft. the Patriots getting T. Higgins. I thought you did. No, that was an alternate draft I sent you to make you happy <laughs> on Easter. I thought that was a you Patriots did. only I wrote one. it into the Pay show. Pay attention, buddy. How many mock right, drafts? I'm out here doing a lot of mock drafts. Gosh, darn this it. is mock draft 1.0. <laughs> I thought you you know, mock, mock draft, draft 1. How, you, you, on I this didn't one, know. do they have the, the draft capital get T. Higgins? They don't. Pay I attention. I was confused by it. Of course. <laughs> Here's how it's going to work. There are trades. This is not how I would run things if any of these teams were lucky enough to have me running the show. <laughs> this is how I think it will play out to the best of my really? knowledge at this Got point. It. We might do this each and every Monday leading up to the draft. First date, Caleb Williams, obvious first pick. Drake made uh, Washington. They shipped out his college teammate, Sam Howell. I think that's a little signal they're going to be drafting Drake May. Trade alert. Hello. Patriots trade to get uh, uh, with the Vikings. Vikings get J.J. McCarthy. More than that a moment. We Marvin Justin Harrison Jefferson. Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. goes to the Cardinals. Jaden Daniels. Antonio Pierce coached him at Arizona State. Oh, Jaden okay. falls to five, so that's wow. a trade with the Chargers. Giants thrilled they finally get a top-flight receiver, Malik Neighbors. The Titans get the tackle. They have to have Joe Holt. And the Falcons, who need help on defense, get the first defensive player in the draft off the board at number eight. So how did those trades happen? The Patriots got, for the third overall pick, picks 11 and 23 and a fifth-round pick later in the draft. And then... For the Raiders, what did they do? They got the 13th pick, a third rounder, and a future first from the or the 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 Chargers got that from the Raiders. Pardon me, as Jim Harbaugh tries to build up that team smartly but slowly. All right, next eight, bro. The Bears thrilled the number three receiver, and there's a big drop between three and four. He's there, so now they have they have. Uh, DJ Moore, obviously, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze. The Jets do a very Jetsy thing, and instead of draft the tackle they need because they have old injured tackles, they take the shiny mm. uh, tight end. Mm. Uh, the Patriots try to rebuild it by taking the second best, some people think best tackle in the class. The Broncos get their quarterback in Bo Nix. I don't like that move, but I think that's what they would do. Jim Harbaugh wants to build up the trenches. Byron Murphy from Texas, probably the best D tackle in the draft. And then the Titans need help at edge. Our friend Cam Jordan getting older. Colts obviously need some corner help with C.J. Stroud in the division. And I know it says tackle next Troy Fautuana for Washington. That's where he played in college in the pros. He's probably going to be kicked inside. That's where the Seahawks need some help. We'll go to the next eight. Next eight picks. 
go through them quickly. The Jags, same thing. In the AFC South right now, need up on corners, whether you're dealing with C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Trevor Lawrence for the Cardinals, or for the Jags, they get a corner. The Bengals still trying to fix that tackle issue. They get one of the youngest and highest upside players in the draft. The, the Rams, Johnny Newton, Aaron Donald out. Maybe the best D tackle, certainly top two D tackle in the draft. The, charge, or the Steelers need help on the inside. They have Herbig right now at center. They take the best center in the draft. The Dolphins lost a lot on defense in the offseason. They get a lot too from UCLA. Some people think he could be the best edge rusher in the draft. We know the Eagles need help at corner Nate Wiggins. The Patriots, with that extra pick that they have, they get a tackle. Now they get the number four receiver, the big guy from LSU. And I, Graham Barton for the Cowboys, he could play any of the four, three spots on the offensive line, guard, center, or tackle. Now to the final eight of the draft. The Packers get a tackle in Latham. The Bucks get a corner in Terry and Arnold from Alabama. The Cardinals get a tackle. They got their right tackle last year. Maybe they get the left tackle this year. The Bills lost all their safeties this offseason. A lot of secondary. Newbins, the only safety is probably going to go in the first round. Patriots trade back into the first oh, back. with Detroit to get Michael Penix oh. Jr. They trade their third oh. rounder and a seventh rounder along with pick number 34. So they end up with a tackle, a wide okay. receiver, and the uh, their quarterback in Michael nice. Penix. And then if I don't know if we can go back to that last eight. I know we jumped it, but there you go. The Ravens do a very Ravensy thing. They get one of the m- most highly sought after players in the draft, Kool Aid McKinstry, the corner from Alabama at pick 30. The R- Niners have heard Brew talking about how bad the right side of their offensive line is. Pretty and the Chiefs like get Ladin McConkey to play slot receiver for okay. that is mock draft Solid. 1.0. So okay. head to foxsports.com. Uh, yeah. to get to review that if it a little fast. Here are the top ten. We're going to dig in on the Vikings. They took the Patriots spot yeah. at three and ended up taking uh, J.J. McCarthy, who would join Minnesota with another third overall pick, Sam Darnold. Brew, you watched a lot of Michigan. Daughter went to Michigan. Yeah. Vikings moving up to grab J.J. a mistake? No. I mean, obviously they got to get a quarterback. All right, we know Sam Darnold's not the future there. And one thing people say, and you can see it about McCarthy, is he's kind of can be a Peyton by numbers guy, right? And Kevin O'Connell, I think that's what he wants. He's out of Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan tree, mm-hmm. Brock Purdy, I mean, fit in, yep. gonna do what's called what the playbook calls for, not make mistakes. I think McCarthy, that's what they see in McCarthy. Obviously, you got a great receiver already that you can throw to. So I, I like it. Look, he's obviously being compared by a lot of people to Kirk Cousins but maybe with a little more upside. He's obviously won big games. The Cousins, that's been a sure. big part of his problem. This guy won a national championship the first in 50 years, first outright in, in at least 50 years for Michigan. So, yeah, I actually think this would be a good move. So that, so the, Brew explains a lot of why I could see if they trade up that it would be for him and not Jaden. I think Kevin O'Connell, I think a lot of those quarterback whisperer guys mm-hmm really want someone to run their system yep. their way, and that's one of the reasons that J.J. McCarthy is moving up draft board. Jaden Daniels feels like higher upside but more variance situation, and if you're Minnesota with Justin Jefferson, with Jordan Addison, with that offensive line already in place, and with that offensive-minded head coach, they might say, we actually – thought we were pretty damn good with Kirk Cousins. You know what I mean? We that yep. is he get a is more athletic than Kirk, but doesn't have to be an Uber athlete. That's who I think the Vikings could want to okay, go. After. Next pick at four, Marvin Harrison Jr. teaming up with Kyler. Last year the Cardinals best receiver was Trey McBride with just over eight hundred yards. Brew, what would the card ceiling be with Marvin Harrison Jr.? Well for Kyler, look, I, I think for Kyler it is more about his study habits his attitude, and is he healthy? Because we, we know his second and third years, he was fine. He was a pro bowler, threw mm-hmm. for almost 4,000 yards. I think he had 50 touchdowns over the two seasons, about 20 interceptions, something around there. So we've seen him be effective, and he's had pretty good receivers. I mean, Larry Fitzgerald obviously was toward the end, but still he was Larry Fitzgerald, A.J. Green, DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins. So yeah. it's not like he hasn't had good receivers. Obviously, Marvin Harrison would be great, but if Kyler has learned from his mistakes in the past, maybe been humbled a tad bit so he'll work a little harder, study, and he's healthy, I, I think he can play well and they can actually – we obviously like what they were building last year. Yeah. yeah, and so, yeah, I think that Kyler is in that kind of meaty tier of quarterbacks where what we think of them is directly correlated to how much talent they have around them. 
And we saw Kyler play have his best years. Uh, it's when you would expect him to because he was, you know, improving as a young player. But with DeAndre Hopkins, when DeAndre Hopkins is one of the best receivers in the league, I think this is – as no-brainer of a pick as there is. The only way I think this doesn't happen is if the Cardinals get so wowed by a trade offer for a team that wants a quarterback. But if the Cardinals stick at four, they are going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. I know there's some smoke that some teams have Malik Neighbors as a higher-ranked receiver. I don't buy that. I certainly don't buy it for the Cardinals. And I think that Kyler having... They they traded a first-round pick for Hollywood Brown that obviously didn't quite work out the way they had hoped. A.J. Green, you mentioned, he was a shell of what he had been in Cincinnati. They they saw what Kyler can look like with DeAndre. I love the Marvin Harrison Jr. fit, and I think that would. I think that is a no-brainer pick for them if they stay. Sleeper team. Oh, back on the Cardinals. Cardinals? Oh, yeah. Your Super Bowl pick two years ago. I only need to get seven wins. Uh, And this mock. Wait, I just realized your Super Bowl pick two years in a row. You're not accountable for it because your quarterback got hurt. Thank you. Kyler got hurt and Kurt got hurt. <laughs> You're off the hook. In this mock, Nick playing with AFC West fire as the Raiders yeah. grab the electric Heisman Trophy winner out of LSU, former Patriot or future Patriot, <laughs> Jaden Daniels, but you've got him going to the Raiders. Uh, Brew, do you like Jaden Daniels in Las Vegas? If they could get him, I, I love it for them. Yeah. I mean, obviously they need a quarterback. And I see him... Like Anthony Richardson, I don't think he's quite as athletic as Richardson, but I think he's a lot like Richardson, but more polished as a passer. Like the athleticism Richardson gives you, he can run it clearly, but I think he's a better passer than Richardson. And he he seems to be a guy that works hard, that really wants to be good, like not a prima donna or anything like that. So I, I do think with the weapons they have, the defense they're building, that this would be a great pick if they can get him. Well, listen, it, it, uh, it's a total boomer bust situation because of his size. If he can hold up to the beating of an NFL season, he'll be excellent. And the biggest difference between him, Anthony Richardson and, and him to me is that Anthony Richardson is probably 40 pounds heavier. Obviously, Jaden was the far more productive collegiate player. But even Anthony, his problem was he got too beat up too right. quickly. The if he were there at 13 where the Raiders are drafting, they would 100% oh, yeah. take him. The question is how much will they pay to move up if, you know what I mean, if they want him. Again, it, it should be noted, he and Antonio Pierce have the relationship from the time at Arizona State. So I think obviously that's their ideal scenario. Uh, finally, the Jets. Important distinction here. We all think the Jets should draft someone to protect Aaron Rodgers. But as Nick pointed out, this is not what we think they should do. But what we think they will do because they are a bit of a silly team. (laughs) Uh, Brew, do you think they go after, or we'll say, do you like them going after another weapon? I'm with you guys in that they need to get their line. Now, they've gotten three new offensive linemen, so they may feel like that's enough. But depth, you're going, you never know, especially with the guys they got. A couple of them are injury prone. So go ahead and get some depth. And Bowers is great. But Tyler Conklin's not bad. And you with the weapons or the receivers that they have in Williams and Wilson and then Brees Hall, that'll open things up for a tight end. And I think the, a lot of these tight ends are really good. And Conklin, I think, in the right situation with Rodgers throwing to him, can be good. I'm not saying great, but he can be good enough that you should go out and get an offensive line. I will believe in the Jets considerably more if they take a tackle at 10. Okay. It will be an adult decision. It will it will all of a sudden ensure you a bit from what I think is the probably inevitable injury to Tyron Smith for at least part of the year. Maybe not right. significant injury, but for yeah. a few games. If they, I think they feel like the type of team that's going to be like, oh my God, look at the poster with Brock Bowers <laughs> on it. And then that's what they'll do. So I, I think the smart move, you take a tackle, so that's not what the Jets will do. That was very good. Iowa LSU, next. LSU-Iowa in an Elite Eight rematch of last year's national championship game. Yahoo reporting last year's title game hit almost 10 million viewers. This should eclipse it. Um, We'll start with you, Nick. Is this a must-win game for Caitlin Clark? Absolutely, unequivocally not. Oh, not? I thought, oh, I I thought No, she's playing the champs, a legendary team of their own, right? The Angel Reese, who has, you know, damn near as much hardware as Caitlin Clark does, who might not even be the best player on her own team this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. And 
by the way, even if she gets through this, the gauntlet just keeps going. Like the the, the rest of the the six teams left in the women's tournament, five of them I think could win the whole thing, and the best team is probably the undefeated one waiting on the other side of the bracket. Caitlin Clark, in my opinion, and we can show you just a very top line of the resume, Brew. Uh, you know, just a short list of her accomplishments. She is a made woman, so to speak, yep. and. There is no shame if she loses to LSU for the second straight year, in my opinion, none. And the idea that this is going to, that this, her legacy, in my opinion, can be improved, but she is in such the infancy of her career that she's not going backwards by losing to the, the defending national champion. So I think absolutely not. I was about to be shocked because I thought you were going to say yes. Oh. You were like, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm with See, you. that's why he does the, 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 <laughs> the, the trick thing because he, he gets to go ahead. No, I, I'm with you. And one of the interesting things about her run is that she's being compared to men, whether it's Ice Cube, you know, offering $5 million to play in the big three, or even Pistol Pete Maravich's yep. scoring record. We've never – conflated the you know men and women in terms of records like that so I'm not going to hold her to a higher standard than we've held great men's college players and what a Tim Duncan and these are guys that stayed three or four years yep Tim Duncan Shaquille O'Neal David Robinson have in common they never even reached the final four did Chris Paul forget about winning Chris Paul never won a championship these guys Elijah Wine Larry Bird they never won championships so anyone that wants to put that on her like she must win the championship to kind of justify how great she's been we haven't done that to great men's players Uh, what Wilds I mean a little bit who I think it's fair to say, like Durant, what? We only win one game, maybe. No, in the I'm not talking about the men's tournament. I'm saying I think it's a fair question. And Jay Williams probably went a little bit too far in his take that he wouldn't consider a great player. Yeah. But I think it's fair to say, hey, you won Naismith Player of the Year. Can you add a championship no. just like several of the other players? Maya Moore won two. Where's, Brittany where's... Griner won. Brit- Brianna Stewart won four years. Asia Wilson won. Don Staley won. Candace Parker won twice. Were all of them at basketball power Except for houses. Brittany Griner. Griner right, and Baylor became that. Yeah, I mean, that's the di- that's Oh, Don Staley lost. I'm sorry. I, yeah, the, she went to Iowa. And, I mean, they yeah. were a good program, really good program. I get it. And LSU's oh, a powerhouse. Like, no, UConn. Or, wait, hold, or exactly. That's, hold on. This is where I get. It's just, I mean, is she going to here or here? Her the, legacy can certainly improve. But if you yeah, lose back yes, to back can, to LSU, the question I think is, it's okay you, to say, like, you know what? Your legacy just went down here. It's not a massive drop. It's just I, it just went from here to here. If she wins, it goes here to here, right? Th- no. So if she loses, it goes here to here. No, but so hold on, wait a second. <laughs> but this is so this is where I just disagree fundamentally once again with I think how a lot of people and you're one of them view sports because if we wilds the n- n- the you the thing that's interesting about your list is if we were to keep going and be like God dog it man. All the greatest players ever played at UConn and Tennessee. Imagine that. (laughs) And to a degree, that's true. But what's also true is a surplus of the 50 greatest ever played at those two schools together. Yep. And, and And right now, I think that if you looked at the raw talent, Uh, 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 you know, left in the tournament, there are two players whose teammates who who are at a severe teammate talent deficit, Juju and Caitlin. I also think they're the two best. I think Juju, even as a freshman, is better individually than anyone on LSU and with respect, anyone on South Carolina. I think Caitlin right now is the best player in the country. But I think that if you were to say, okay, who are the 100 best players? South Carolina is going to have seven of them. LSU's got five of them. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I agree with you, Wilds. Her legend grows massively Absolutely. with a win. Yeah. I, don't, I think it would take that step back you're talking about if she had lost in an earlier round. Or maybe, oddly, if she gets outdueled by Juju. Because that will feel like more of a fair fight to me. USC versus Iowa. Okay. LSU, it does. It feels a little. I don't want to say LeBron eighteen against the Warriors esque, but it well, does. They, feel, I mean, Iowa is the higher seed, though. The, no, I, right. But uh, to I'm, me, that's because of her brilliance. I don't want to say right. alone. I think LSU is as the overall. More I think they overall team. have more talent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, 
Either way, I think that the fact that this is happening right now and then the, the, the dessert of this game is Juju against UConn and Paige yeah. oh. makes this maybe the greatest night in women's basketball history. Yeah. Well, Paige might also be the best player in the country. Well, that's the other Paige thing. Is Paige, Paige the was yeah. the best her player and then got Juju, hurt. Juju, that's going to be a – Right, but the fact that like, we're having these types yeah. of kind of silly arguments oh, it, it, and that we're this excited. It's the greatest night as far as I'm concerned that's by great. far yeah. for women's basketball. Johnson also might be the best player on LSU. Might be, she could outdo – that's what I'm saying. I, I, said, I, said, I said, I don't think Angel's even the best player on her own team this year. Yeah, she's shooting. She's definitely the best rapper. So she's shooting crazy. She shot over 55% in each one last three tournament oh, games. She's so killing. She's crushing. Uh, okay, coming up next, Zeke back to Dallas. Brew breaks out his report card. If, Do I look Ka- excited? If Caitlin does go beat LSU in either UConn or Juju and then South Carolina. Special. Music. UFL medals. Case Cook is to Vinny Papali uh, with the toe tap nice. grab for the Memphis Showboats. It's yeah. your guy, remember? Yeah. Uh, Memphis takes down the Roughnecks. Not enough for a medal, though. Nope. Bronze medal, former NFL and Alabama quarterback A.J. McCarron. 216 yards, two touchdowns. But... They lost to the they lost to the Panthers. Why did the Battle Hawks lose to the Panthers? Well, I'm about to show you why. EJ Perry, Panthers quarterback, says I'm a quarterback, but I can run for a couple touchdowns as well. He gets a little whirly birded right there, scores anyway. It looks like just John Elway in the Super Bowl. He gets the silver medal with a couple touchdowns. But how'd they win? Well, a guy who hadn't kicked a field goal since high school banged a 64-yarder to win. Pretty good. Jake Bates. Wow. Reportedly, the Lions are interested in him. I, yeah, you think? 64-yarder <laughs> in the first kick he's had in a game since high school. There's the medal stand from the UFL action this weekend. Excellent. Or yeah, action I, this weekend. Every UFL. Monday. Uh, according to Jeremy Fowler, head to the NFL, there's mutual interest in a Zeke reunion in Dallas. Last year, he played 17 games and gutted out around 600 yards, bro. For an offense, a Patriots offense, that is, that could really do nothing. Do you like this reunion? I'm underwhelmed. Okay. You want a great? Ideally, yeah, but I don't even see any props. C prop. minus. Where are the props? C minus. You don't, you, you're, you're mailing it. I give no, this I mean, grade an F. You're mailing it. You're Where's the card? No, look, here, here's the deal. I did want them to go get Zeke last year. Yeah. They needed a meat <laughs> and potatoes guy. Yeah. yeah. But what they have also? Oh, Tony Pollard. So you had the thunder and the lightning. <laughs> now you got no lightning. Well, so, sure, bring him back. He's a great locker room guy. Yeah. He's Dak's buddy. I- but you better – he can't be your number one back. He can't – I don't number think be your one, number two a- back with, with Dowdle is the number one. So, as long as they get somebody in the draft, and you might draft somebody, it doesn't mean it's going to be great. So, yeah, but, and, they need a legit running back who's going to do damage. And it's I, not Zeke. I, Zeke okay, can be a compliment. But the, I guess here would be my criti- my criticism is you, you, you're right that you might draft a guy. It doesn't mean they're going to be great. You might sign an aging veteran who once was great. It doesn't mean they're going to be great. But you feel like Derek that. Derrick Henry you feel would have been fine. You, you love. None the, of these guys are getting huge, but that's the it, thing. You Saquon got $13 million a year, how buddy. Much is, is that guaranteed? Yeah. With two years, right? Yeah, two years $13, guaranteed. Million, $13 guaranteed. million is not a. It's ton the of money top of the market for, for the back. Day. For, for a running back? Play. They're yeah. underpaid. Yeah. The position they pay. You had, you had to have the grade. Yeah. I'm underwhelmed. What? Well, so 